Weston A. Price, Compassionate Scientific Genius. Life in all its fullness is Mother Nature obeyed. Weston A. Price. Introduction. A highly respected dentist and medical researcher who lived from 1870 to 1948, Dr. Weston A. Price pioneered the idea that nutrition is the key component of exceptional dental and physical health. He made many significant contributions to the practice of dentistry, inventing new tools and techniques, and serving as president of the first National Association for Dentistry. But Dr. Price was deeply troubled by the rapidly increasing degeneration in dental health that he observed in the population. While the vast majority of researchers and clinicians at that time were studying ways to repair the damage or alleviate the symptoms of dental disease, Dr. Price was determined to find populations free from this degeneration and to understand how they had escaped what was becoming commonplace. Starting in the early 1930s and over a period of 10 years, he and his wife Florence traveled to 14 different countries and found indigenous people who still consumed traditional foods and were unaffected by the plague of rampant dental caries and the effects of physical degeneration. Dr. Price provided detailed photographic evidence of his findings and documented essential sacred food principles and ancestral wisdom applied by the indigenous peoples that resulted in their heightened immunity, minimal tooth deterioration, and overall health of body and mind. His work was highly praised by scientists and academics from places such as Harvard and Yale. Yet it is only with the passing of time since Dr. Price's work was published that we truly see the impacts he foreshadowed. In the almost 80 years since he documented the deleterious effects of what he referred to as the displacing foods of modern commerce, we have only allowed our food supply soil and manufacturing processes to become more destructive to nature and our soil, more detrimental to our health, more damaging to future generations, and more devastating to our species. Dr. Price could never have imagined our future full of chemicals, microwaves, preservatives, genetic modifications, and neon food and drink. In our version of modern times, disease is not only rampant, it's acceptable. No longer viewed with shock are childhood disabilities and deformities, ravaging cancers and chronic illnesses. Alas, these things are commonplace in today's world and make all the more imperative Dr. Price's plea to return to nature's ways as our nation's top priority and certainly the priority of every family. The Early Years Weston Andrew Velu Price was born September 6, 1870, on Eagle Rock, his family's 200-acre farm near Newburgh, Ontario. He was the ninth child born to parents Andrew and Adelaide Price. This backwoods Canadian family produced an inventor, a medical doctor, two dentists, a Methodist minister, and a resourceful farmer. Weston attended the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, where he received his DDS and MS degrees. He opened his first dental practice in Grand Oaks, North Dakota in 1894. That same year, he left his practice after becoming deathly ill with typhoid fever. His older brother, Albert, nursed him back to health, but during his illness, Weston's teeth had decayed alarmingly. He went back to the family farm to convalesce where not only his health improved, but his dental deterioration was arrested. The following spring, his, he and his uncle Delmage camped for an extended period of time in the back country of Canada, living on salmon, small game, and berries. Delmage was a man of great intuitive wisdom who understood the role of natural food sources in refurbishing and sustaining the body. The backwoods diet worked. Along with overcoming his illness, he saw an overall improvement in the deterioration of his teeth. On many occasions, Dr. Price acknowledged the impact that environment had for inspiring the mind and rejuvenating the body. This led to Dr. Price's first consideration that diet could be the leading cause of tooth decay. In 1895, Dr. Price established his dental practice in Cleveland, Ohio. He married his true love, Florence Anthony of Brampton, in the year 1897. 
Florence showed she was an adventurous traveler when they honeymooned in the rugged Mazinaw Lake Park, reached by taking a train, a 20-mile wagon, and a six-mile trip by boat. In 1899, Weston Price and his wife Florence built the Bon Echo Inn on the shores of Lake Mazinaw Lake in southeast Ontario. Florence suggested the name Bon Echo because of the marvelous echo that rebounded from the face of the granite cliff on the opposite shore. The remote site presented an incredibly challenge, and building the 28-room inn was a feat which never could have been accomplished without the indomitable persistence of Dr. Price and his sublime indifference to the almost incredible difficulties that beset him at every turn, according to Merrill Dennison, a later owner of the inn. Dr. Price and his wife operated the inn during summers until they sold it in 1910. The couple went on to have their only son, Donald Weston Andrew Valu Price. Donald later died at the age of 15 from a heart attack caused by an infected root canal that was performed by his father. This tragic event, along with what Dr. Price observed in his own dental patients, rampant decay often accompanied by serious problems elsewhere in the body, such as arthritis, osteoporosis, diabetes, intestinal complaints, and chronic fatigue, gave way to a unique idea. He would seek out the healthiest people on the planet and study them to understand their successes. Usually this meant people living in isolation from modern civilization. It was a unique time in the world. Air travel was just becoming accessible to those who could pay the steep prices and portable photographic equipment was now advanced enough that a layperson could carry and utilize personal cameras. In fact, Kodak's slogan in the 1920s was Kodak as you go, and the prices certainly did that, capturing hundreds of images on their trips. Dr. Price benefited from all these modern advancements in order to visit some of the most, re most remote places in the world. Dr. Price and Mrs. Price collected detailed and unbiased data, including photographs, saliva samples, and food that he sent home to be analyzed for nutritional content. He uncovered secrets of our ancestral nutritional wisdom and made stunning visual documentation that he put into his greatest work, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. Primitive Secrets Dr. Price was impressed by the superior types of manhood, womanhood, and childhood that nature has been able to produce from a suitable diet and a suitable environment. In search of people unaffected by rampant dental caries, Dr. and Mrs. Price would have to travel to some of the most isolated parts of the globe where the native residents had little to no contact with the modernized outside world. Their expedition took them to indigenous groups in places such as Scotland, Switzerland, Australia, Canada, Alaska, New Zealand, Peru, and Africa. In all, they visited 14 countries over 10 years. Dr. Price took hundreds of photographs that beautifully illustrates his discoveries and unexpected conclusion. Once indigenous people turned away from their sacred native foods and replaced them with modernized processed foods, such as white sugar, white flour, vegetable oils, and canned foods, physical and mental degeneration quickly followed. The effects of these displacing foods can be seen directly to the person in forms of tooth decay, lowered immunity, and susceptibility to degenerative and cro chronic diseases. But the more impactful way we see this effect is on that person's children. Not only will there be tooth decay, but now the child will suffer from deformed dental arches and narrowing of the face. The intellectual and emotional disability, lowered immunity and degenerative and chronic diseases, and reproductive and birth complications. And every generation just gets worse. When we talk about narrowing of the dental arches and other malformations, this visual helps us understand what that looks like. Native populations had wide, flat, broad arches, and without the proper nutrition to form those arches, they became narrow and narrower, the face thinner and thinner. An example is these two brothers, one with very healthy, straight teeth, a wide smile, 
um, prominent cheekbones, um, good musculature, and his brother, who does not have similar bearing. At the time, the health of native peoples was mainly attributed to racial purity. Many scholars believe that when people intermarried with those from another genetic background, their health and mental capabilities suffered. Dr. Price disagreed with this idea. His travel was designed to compare the dental and physical health of people who had adopted a modern diet with those of the same genetic background who had followed a traditional diet. For example, two villages near each other, but one had come into contact with modern man and the other had not. Thus, Dr. Price was able to show that race had nothing to do with these changes in health. Physical degeneration occurred in children of native parents who adopted the white man's diet, while mixed race children whose parents had consumed traditional foods were born with wide, handsome faces and straight teeth. This same kind of study would be impossible today, as civilization has encroached on even the most remote regions of the world. The results were always the same. Those who stayed true to their traditional native food diets were free of such degeneration and enjoyed remarkable physical and emotional health. That manifestation of perfect genetic expression looks like little to no tooth decay with broad, wide jaws and well-formed dental arches, strong, perfectly formed bodies, high immunity to infectious, chronic, and degenerative diseases, mental and emotional stability, and healthy babies with easy births. It's important to note that Dr. Price had set out on his journeys expecting he would encounter some tribes that were eating a plant-based diet and were free from physical degeneration. However, the research he conducted shows that the nutrition of the tribes he met were anything but plant-based. In fact, all indigenous groups he met consumed animal products in some form. Here you can see the populations that were visited and the foods that they held sacred. Sacred foods fall into four categories, dairy, seafood, offal, and insects, supplemented by other types of food that were available and appropriate based on the geographical location um, and skill sets of the native populations. Dr. Price found that all healthy indigenous diets were rich in fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and what would later be identified as K2. Little was known about vitamin K2 at the time of his journeys, and he referred to this vitamin as Activator X in his work. He discovered that these vitamins were necessary for optimal health and that they act as a catalyst for mineral absorption and protein usage. Dr. Price found that the food consumed in indigenous diets was up to 10 times more nutrient-dense than their modern counterparts, and that this was in the 30s before Big Ag and Chem, factory farms, and all the other inventions that have further stripped our soil and poisoned our land. These diets also often included elements such as bones, offal, culturing, drying, fermentation, and raw foods. He found that every thriving, healthy community he visited had sacred foods that were cherished by the people, and with unerring con consistency, his lab results confirmed that these sacred foods were indeed deeply nutritious, whether it was the spring butter of the Swiss or the seal oil of the Eskimo. One immediately wonders if there is not something in the life-giving vitamins and minerals of the food that builds not only great physical structures within which their souls reside, but builds minds and hearts capable of a higher type of manhood in which the material values of life are made secondary to individual character. Weston A. Price Throughout Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, Dr. Price gives us insight to the observations he made of the mental well-being and the overall morals, character, and integrity of the indigenous people he visited. He was looking for people with vibrant physical health, but he was astonished at the ethics, honor, and ideals of the communities that he visited. Mental illness and antisocial behavior had plagued modern civilization and was on the rise during Dr. Price's years. When he visited prisons and juvenile detention centers, 
Dr. Price found a link between poor health and criminal behavior. Nearly all of the, those imprisoned were marked with dental abnormal, or abnormalities, and many of their faces were badly deformed. In contrast, he found no jails or asylums in any of the remote indigenous villages that he visited. Current research only further supports this connection between physical structure and mental stability. Dr. Price recognized that only by returning to our traditional foods can we restore the vital nutrients needed for a healthy mind and body, and that this could improve our society's moral compass. Now our science. With today's science, we can explain why our brains function better when properly nourished. Examples of brain healthy foods are raw whole dairy from animals fed with green grass, egg yolks, organ meats from pastured animals, bone broths made from healthy animals, fish eggs, and animal fats like lard, butter, and tallow from healthy pastured animals. They have neither doctor nor dentist, policeman nor jail, because they have no need for them. Weston A. Price If pigs need several months of special feeding in order that the mothers-to-be may be prepared for adequate carry-forward of all the inheritance factors in a high state of perfection, surely human mothers-to-be deserve as much consideration. Weston A. Price Dr. Price highlights the importance placed on adequate nutrition for indigenous mothers and fathers and also cites scientific information regarding the roles nutrition plays in a healthy brain development and structural formation for babies in utero. In particular, he studied the effect of the lack of vitamin A on fetal development in both animals and people. In most places that Dr. Price visited, mothers-to-be ate special foods that were rich in nutrients for up to six months before attempting conception knowing that this would increase their fertility and the health and formation of their child. He also believed that birth defects were not solely related to the mother, but that the father's health was also an important to the offspring. For example, one Eskimo woman had given birth to 23 children. She stuck to her traditional diet, while her husband and children ate a modern diet. Despite the burden on her body, she had no dental caries, while her husband and children suffered from both dental and other diseases. Some indigenous people also recognized this link and provided nutritional support to expectant fathers as well as mothers. In several, several of the primitive tribes studied, there was a consciousness that not only the mother should have special nutrition, but also the father. Other traditional methods practiced were that of spacing children from three to five years apart, recognizing the need to restore the body's natural stores. Our wise ancestors diligently studied and observed each generation and learned which practices created healthy, strong children. They took great effort to improve the status of each subsequent generation, protecting the future of their families and tribes. Today's society can learn much from this long-term perspective, both in the care and feeding of our children and also in taking care of our planet. Nutritional Guidance Repeatedly in his travels, Dr. Price saw evidence of disease and degradation when people left their native diets and homes and engaged with white men and their displacing foods. Repeatedly, he saw evidence of the reversal of that impact when the person returned to their native ways. Healing of cavities, the next child birth healthy, etc. A group of 27 children were selected from poor millworker families based on their rampant dental caries. Dr. Price took x-rays, analyzed their saliva, recorded size and depth of all cavities, measured height and weight, and recorded school grades, including behavioral notes. They were given one nutritional meal a day with no other change in nutrition or home dental care. The result was complete control of dental caries for the entire group. In some cases, a hard glassy surface formed over the pulp chamber and protected the tooth that had been previously exposed. Two teachers sought out Dr. Price to ask what had caused their poorest student to become one of the best in class. 
One boy had been so weak they worried if he would be able to walk the two blocks to the mission to receive the meal. Six weeks later, he was playing basketball like a star and showing no fatigue. Dr. Price believed that well over 95% of all dental caries could be controlled this way. If such amazing results can be seen by changing one meal a day in an otherwise deficient nutritional regime, imagine the effect of complete dietary change. A 14-year-old girl had lost all four of her permanent molars. Her dentist said all her other permanent teeth must be pulled and a denture constructed, top and bottom, which would significantly impact her appearance. She had 42 cavities in 24 teeth in addition to fillings. After seven months taking high vitamin butter and high vitamin cod liver oil three times a day, her teeth were well restored. At 15, she had all her teeth except the four molars previously extracted, and she could chew well, and her appearance was excellent. The healing meal Dr. Price was utilizing began with four ounces of tomato or orange juice and a teaspoon of equal parts high vitamin butter oil and high vitamin cod liver oil. Then they were served a pint of vegetable and meat stew, which included bone marrow with fine cuts of tender meat broiled separately to retain their juice, then chopped very fine along with vegetables, including plenty of very yellow carrots. Cooked fruit with very little sweetening, rolls made from freshly ground whole wheat flour and spread with high vitamin butter, and two glasses of fresh whole raw milk. Man has lost through disuse some of the normal faculty for consciously recognizing a body's requirements. The only hunger of which we are now conscious is a hunger for energy to keep us warm and supply power. We stop eating when an adequate amount of energy has been provided, whether or not the bodybuilding and repairing materials have been included. Weston A. Price Sometimes you have to work hard for nutrient-dense food like walking from the high Andes to the seacoast for dried fish eggs to maintain the fertility of your women. The primitives have obtained, often with great difficulty, foods that are scarce but rich in certain elements, including iodine, copper, manganese, and special mm -hmm. vitamins. In our modern world, where convenience is treasured above much else, it seems inconvenient to even find time to visit the farmer's market or to consider visiting multiple stores in order to select the most nutritious food. Add that to the lack of time and desire to prepare home-cooked meals, and most families are eating processed foods for every meal of the day, meeting their energy requirements, but grossly missing the bodybuilding nutrients that their bodies require. We have lost our ability to detect the nutrients we need, like animals still do. Dr. Price described how wild deer prefer to browse on the most nutrient-rich vegetation, even while leaving the same plants growing in poor soil untouched. Processed foods lack vital nutrients. Modern white flour has had approximately four-fifths of the phosphorus and nearly all of the vitamins removed by processing. This makes it easier to transport and store, which is great for the manufacturer, but detrimental to the customer. Even insects and bugs select food that is nourishing. Bugs and children require the same minerals and vitamins. Our modern white bread cannot support such insect life. The empty calories are known as displacing foods. Some people think that the best answer to this dilemma is taking vitamins and supplements. However, supplements don't provide the same nutrition as real food. Even in the 1930s, people looked for the magic bullet for good health. Dr. Price wrote, there is a marked tendency in modern civilization to substitute synthetic products for nature's foods. He believed that our knowledge of the nutrients in foods was incomplete and was always expanding, and that it was the complexity of foods that nourishes us. In particular, he pointed out how scientists started by thinking that vitamin D was one thing, but it is, in fact, a complex array of nature's products. For years, activated agacerol, Vitamin D2 was thought to meet nature's requirements for the body to absorb minerals and for pregnant women, and pregnant women were given it in tablet form. 
this resulted in children being born with kidney stones or having abnormal closures of the skull or even calcification of the arteries. Dr. Price strongly advocated that we use whole foods, not synthetic substitutes. Great harm is done, in my judgment, by the sale and use of substitutes for natural food, he said. This viewpoint continues to find support today from more and more science and study. Tooth decay is a symptom, not a disease. It is evidence of a faulty nutrition. Weston A. Price As a dentist, Dr. Price was concerned by his counterparts' focus on treatment for all the diseases and decay they were seeing in their practices. His curiosity about why this degeneration was happening led him and Florence around the globe in search of healthy populations that were free from these challenges. He was thrilled to find groups of people who experienced little or no dental disease. This health was possible, not through diligent hygiene or fluoridated water, treatments being recommended in the civilized society, and, but through a diet rich in nutrients, particularly fat-soluble vitamins. He argued passionately for changing Western society's priorities to focus on good nutrition, enriching the soil, and prenatal care. Substitution, substituting prevention for repair. Soil matters. The most serious problem confronting the coming generations is this nearly insurmountable handicap of depletion of the quality of foods because of the depletion of the minerals of the soil. Weston A. Price. The nutritional quality of food is limited by the fertility of the soil. Foods vary in their nutritional density according to the soil quality and environmental conditions. Dr. Price studied the mineral content of the soil along with the associated effect on nutritional density and disease. He provided data showing the relationship between soil depletion and progressive increase in heart disease. He related the fertility of the soil to health of domestic animals. Dr. Price remarked, how primitive people managed to farm the same land for centuries while still maintaining the fertility and integrity of the soil. They were, out of necessity and tradition, organic farmers, and their agricultural practices were sustainable. After heavy rains, the Swiss villagers would collect runaway soil by hand and return it to their pastures and fields. Their milk products were several times higher in fat-soluble vitamins than the equivalent milk products that most European and American sources, including in Lower Switzerland. The Gaelics of the Outer Hebrides collected the residue of the smoke of peat fires to fertilize their soil, which Price confirmed to be highly effective using laboratory experiments. Going against the principles of nature does nothing but harm for us, the animals, and the environment. Weston A. Price Mechanical farming began in 1925, compounding the depletion of our soil. In the 1950s, our country's use of toxic pesticides and fertilizers was established, exhausting the necessary microorganisms and the soil's natural elements needed for proper nutrition of plants. To make matters worse, in the mid-1990s, genetically modified seeds and the use of glyphosate was introduced. Today, the United States alone uses 200 million pounds of glyphosate. Data shows that mineral levels in North America farm soil have been depleted by up to 85%, by 76% in Asia, and 72% in Europe. Fewer minerals in our soil means fewer minerals in our food, which means higher rates of disease. Industrialized agriculture has brazenly ignored the impact of current farming practices on the soil that will be bequeathed to future generations. Modern agricultural practices of monocrop cultivation and the injudicious use of phosphate-based fertilizers have created vast tracts of dead soil over the course of just a few generations. At the same time, diseases like cancer, obesity, bone deformities, heart conditions, lung and bronchial disease are skyrocketing. Soil matters in order to get proper nutrient content. Nutrient content matters for overall health and well-being. 
Dr. Price showed time and again that exposure to modern foods had an immediate impact and a long-term impact. The meat, butter, and milk must begin with the soil and how an animal was raised. It completely changes the structure of the food and how it tastes and how it is metabolized. The soil where food starts cannot be contaminated, must be teeming with billions of microorganisms that sustain the chain of life. The meat must come from gas-fed cows and bison. The chickens should not be fed soy, and they should be free to roam on healthy land where they can eat bugs and all the little things that they enjoy. This chart shows the difference in dental caries between primitive and what Dr. Price termed modern cultures. Remember, this was the 30s. So while there's a 10 or more fold increase between the two groups he studied, 91% of Americans today have dental caries. If a scale were extended a mile long to represent man's time on earth, and the decades represented by inches. It should be very concerning to see that there is more degeneration in the last few inches than the preceding mile combined. This gives some idea of the virulence of the blight contributed by our modern civilization. Weston A. Price. Voices of Opposition like any great truth-teller, Dr. Price had his share of opposition and negative reviews. Here are a few and our rebuttal to them. Dr. Price was not a scientist. His work was superficial or simplistic. Dr. Price's methodology while on his travels was the epitome of the scientific method. He had a hypothesis, actually more than one if you count looking for a vegetarian society, he examined the natural world, teeth, height, weight, collected samples, food, saliva, blood, and tested them, and then he drew conclusions. Much of his work was published in peer-reviewed journals of his day. The Eskimos have one of the highest rates of osteoporosis in the world. This directly conflicts with Dr. Price's claims. Many of the Eskimos that have been studied are along the routes of commerce that have made it easy to replace traditional foods with modern foods like white flour and sugar. Also, not every primitive society followed the nutritional principles that Dr. Price discovered. If any primitive group did not have access to or follow the basic principle of consuming fat-soluble vitamins, that society would not have strong bones or teeth. This could have happened because a drought, changed migration habits of caribou or seafood was no longer available and people turned to farming and away from eating fish or eggs. Plenty of societies have gone extinct because of poor nutrition. That was his lesson. Dr. Price was anti-vegetarian. Dr. Price actually tried very hard to find a primitive culture that existed solely on plants and had strong genetic expression. He was unable to find even one. This is a loud argument in today's world where many mistakenly attribute vegetarian and vegan lifestyles with health, environmentalism, and even spirituality. Dr. Price did not live in such a time. He just studied the data and concluded that no populations were found that thrived on a vegetal diet alone, and certainly not on a vegan diet. While extolling the health of primitive people, Dr. Price ignored their short life expectancy and high rates of infant mortality, endemic diseases, and malnutrition. Dr. Price extolled the health of those groups who were healthy and described the high rates of infant mortality, endemic diseases, and malnutrition in the groups that were not healthy. Much of the value of his research comes from the fact that he was able to observe healthy and unhealthy groups of the same racial stock side by side and therefore demonstrate the correlation between diet and disease. The health decline that Dr. Price observed was due to exposure to unfamiliar germs to which they were not resistant. Dr. Price was amazed to find that the primitive African tribes he studied were resistant to the infectious diseases associated with Africa. By contrast, the whites on their devitalized diet suffered greatly from these diseases. 
even though exposed to TB, Swiss villagers and Gaelic seafaring peoples were completely immune as long as they consumed their native diet. Infectious disease did indeed cause much suffering among non-industrialized peoples as soon as they abandoned their traditional diets. The same dearth of nutrients that made them susceptible to these diseases also made them susceptible to tooth decay and a change in skeletal structure of the next generation. Dr. Price ascribed to the now defunct theory of focal infarction. Dr. Price did indeed publish articles about how dental infections lead to infections that travel along blood, lymph, neural, and meridian pathways to other parts of the body. He believed that the pathogenic bacteria generated in these sites, typically streptococci, can travel to bacteria-laden distributed fields, which may include the heart, rheumatic fever and mitral valve prolapse, joints, rheumatoid arthritis, kidneys, glomerulomyositis and chronic kidney and bladder dysfunction, and brain, memory loss, and obsessive-compulsive disorder symptoms. Doctors who not, do not perform a thorough physical exam, which should include the teeth, and who are unfamiliar with focal infections, typically only treat the symptoms. Thus, they may prescribe non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for arthritis or medications for cardiac, cardiac arrhythmias while missing the true cause of the patient's condition or disease. The conventional dental community has tried for years to discredit this theory that has many respected advocates and is strongly supported in Europe and India. Dr. Price's Legacy The Price Pottinger Nutritional Foundation. In 1952, the Santa Barbara Medical Research Foundation was established, becoming a nonprofit organization in 1954. Following the death of Dr. Price, the foundation was renamed in his honor as the Weston A. Price Memorial Foundation in 1965. In 1969, the foundation was again renamed as the Price Pottinger Foundation to include Dr. Francis M. Pottinger, a fellow researcher and traditional food advocate. Dr. Pottinger's studies included experimentation with cats' diets that showed that raw, unprocessed animal foods were key in providing nutrients for increased vitality. The Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation is dedicated to educating people about living a healthy lifestyle and achieving their optimal health through eating a traditional diet. The foundation publishes Nutrition and Physical Degeneration as well as many other books, and has grown to house the libraries and research of many notable scientists within the field of nutrition. The foundation is the home to all of Dr. Price's original research and photography. They publish a quarterly newsletter, offer classes and lectures, and have launched the Wellness Project in the hopes of creating a like-minded community to gather together to discover what it takes to get well. Weston A. Price Foundation Founded in 1999, this nonprofit organization supports the research and findings of Dr. Weston A. Price. The foundation is dedicated to restoring nutrient-dense foods back to the human diet through education, research, and activism. The foundation puts out a quarterly journal titled Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. These journals include up-to-date articles and research of diet, agricultural, and alternative therapies. The journal also serves as a wonderful reference when sourcing a traditional lifestyle. President of the Foundation, Sally Fallon, has mirrored the work of Dr. Price in her highly respected book, Nourishing Traditions, the cookbook that challenges politically correct nutrition and the diet dictocrats, which has changed the lives of countless modern families. Today's Real Food Movement Currently, much attention is given to real food in modern society. Bone broth stores aren't as common as Starbucks, but you can find at least one in most major cities now. Organic markets are starting to rival traditional stores in size and scope. About $45 billion is spent on organic food every year in the United States. Today, organic products are available across America in more than 20,000 food stores and nearly three out of four grocery stores, according to TechSci Research. It is projected to grow at a compounded annual rate of 16% through 2020. On a global scale, the market for organic 
functional, allergen-free, and better-for-you foods reached a record $1 trillion in 2017, according to Euromonitor International. Venture capitalists and angel investors are stepping in to back startups in the organic food chain. Last year, they invested more than $2 billion in the sector, according to AgFunder. Consumers' appetite for local foods is exploding. Overall, local foods generated $11.7 billion in sales in 2014 and will climb to $20.2 billion in 2019, according to Package Facts, a market research firm. All this means that potentially real food is available to people in a way it has never been before. However, it also means that corruption and false labeling and marketing propaganda will surely follow where so much money is to be had. And in the end, the truth is, it's not necessary. Traditional foods are not a fad. They are what have nourished and carried us generation after generation for thousands of years. We can now visualize our universe, its light, gravity, and heat, its seasons, tides, and harvest, which prepare a habitation for the universe of vital forms, microscopic and majestic, which fill the oceans and the forests. We have a common denominator for universes within and around each other. Our world, our food, and our life have potentials so vast that we can only observe directions not goals. We sense human achievements or ignominious race self-destruction. Every creed today vaguely seeks a utopia. All have visualized a common controlling force or deity as the most potent force in all human affairs. Yes, man's place is most exalted when he obeys mother's nature's laws. Weston A. Price